do you want to make your computer run about 300% faster? Would you think I'm joking if I told you that that part costs about $20? We can do that today. Let's go ahead and dive into it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the power cable is unplugged. We don't get electrocuted that way. We're going to open it up. Additionally, there are two screws there. So untake the two screws on the side that seems to be independent. And we're going to look for the hard drive. Oh, that's a hard drive. All right. We are going to replace this hard drive today with a solid state drive. Solid state drives are so much faster. We are looking at, I would estimate, three times as fast as traditional mechanical hard drives which contain spinning disks. Solid state drives do not have a seek time. They are not seeking anything with a mechanical arm to find the data. Here you can see that the read and write times are about five times faster. There are some solid state drives that are called NVMe, but this is called the 2.5 inch version, so that's what you would look for. And this hard drive here is a 3.5 inch, 3.5 inch drive. And so we're going to remove that. There's going to be all kinds of different contraptions and different models of computers to remove it. But really, sometimes the SATA cable has a clip. Just to press that and then pull it out. Then we got the SATA power cable right here. Just pull that straight out. So SATA ports look like this. And you're going to find identical ports on the solid state drive. Since we ideally are going to save an old computer and we're going to use it ourselves or give it to someone that can use it, it's going to be good to have an operating system that has support for the next few years. Windows 10 doesn't lose support until sometime in 2025. Originally, they said that you would not be able to update for free to Windows 10 from Windows 7 or Windows 8 as of 2020. However, magically, you know, if you create an installation media for Windows 10, with a flash drive of 8 gigabytes or larger, you will be able to install it and have updated Windows either before or after you create the cloned solid state drive. So to create that, there's some options. So you notice we've already got this mounted on a adapter tray, and that is a 2.5 to 3.5 adapter tray. A lot of times it does not need to be that fancy. These are so lightweight that it's very popular to mount them with command strips. And so really that would be an option right there. Um, you know what? Let's do it. After we clone it. Probably the easiest option is to get a dual hard drive dock. You just have to make sure that it supports offline clone. One hazard with this though the source drive has to be the same size or smaller than the target drive. And let me remind you that hard drives are less expensive than solid state drives. Another option is a SATA to USB cable. This one actually has an enclosure with it. And one thing that you look for is that it comes with a free download of cloning software which may make it easier for you. So you can actually buy this without, and you're going to want to download the software Macrium Reflect. And I'm going to leave a link for that in the description because it is the easiest and one of the best ways to go. So one of the pluses with cloning software is that the target drive does not have to be larger than the source drive. There's actually just labeled source and target. So as long as the source is not larger than the target in terms of capacity. This one is luckily a 250 gigabyte capacity hard drive and this is a 256 
gigabyte capacity solid state drive. So it's gotten really easy. This is the most simple method if you have one of these and you can manage to afford a solid state drive that is bigger than your hard drive. And you just power this on and it's a one button offline clone. And so you can read the directions for your particular model. The other option is to get a SATA USB interface or get into your computer and plug this up to a spare SATA data cable and power cable. Now, if you have a pre-built computer, um, I say that kind of like the mass-produced Dell or HP. If you have that style of computer, like you didn't build your own, you're probably not even going to have a spare set of SATA cables. You have some options when it comes to the capacity of the solid state drive. So one terabyte is about $90. 500 gigabytes, half of a terabyte is about 50. Now you're going to go down to about $20 for 128, which is just basically enough to contain the Windows system files plus a you know, random array of your own files that aren't too large. So kind of a sweet spot is the 250, 256 gigabyte range, which is still about $25. I've not really found a big difference in the manufacturer of SSDs. However, you will notice that some come with three-year warranties and some come with five-year warranties. However, the typical lifespan is pretty much equivalent to a traditional hard drive five to eight years. Okay, we're gonna actually mount this with command strips because there's just something really appealing to the idea. It's like you're using uh, arts and crafts for a data center. Easy peasy. And voila. At this point, solid state drives require some pretty advanced silicon chips. The embodied CO2 is a pretty large percentage. One thing pointing out here, this is a 512 gigabyte. And so this is gonna be about cut in half by a 256 solid state drive. What embodied CO2 is, is represented by the orange clouds here. So virtually everything but the personal use of the device, which would be called operational carbon, is embodied CO2. About two thirds of the carbon produced in the manufacturing of a computer is embodied CO2. Truth be told, this is a little mixed in terms of environmental impact. The sophisticated silicon chips on solid state drives do create a very high environmental impact. However, if you get a lower capacity one, it's still um, very, very economical to be able to turn the old hard drive into a solid state drive. And plus the operational cost of it, the cost that you, while you have it as a consumer is about half. Thank you for watching. Please, I'm going to be making a lot more videos on uh, doing little things, uh, technical things, sometimes repair things, to be able to help the environment just on a day-to-day -day basis. So please, if you think that you would like that kind of content, go ahead and click subscribe and hang in there with me. And also hit the like button. And the planet would like to thank you for hacking the environment.